All right, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, good program win on, on Saturday. I thought our support staff, I mentioned this after the game, but I thought our support staff was critical. You know, we go play in 86 degree weather. We don't even have that in fall camp here. Uh, so I thought our strength conditioning, nutrition, uh, athletic training, all those were, were really critical. Um, getting our guys, we didn't have anybody that missed any time due to heat. So I thought that was really good. Um, and I think our sports site has really been helpful um, getting our guys back after two emotional losses. So I thought the two keys in the game were number one, points off turnovers, um, 21 nothing, And then the starting field position was plus 18 in our favor. And both those are really team stats. I thought those were the two big indicators. Um, real quick recap, special teams, um, you know, 42-yard net punt. That's that. That's winning football. Thought uh, Michael Hayes was special. He had uh, on a kickoff was a huge benefit. Uh, only one of his eight kickoffs were returned. Um, and then field goals. He got two uh, two field goals. And then Leighton Bechtel had to hold. Grayson was out, and and Leighton did a nice job. Um, and then defensively, uh, four takeaways were huge. Thought. When we turned the ball over, uh, the answer and getting the ball right back was was really big. Um, we've got we still got to work on our tackling. First half we missed too many tackles, and then on third down they they uh, they had a day on us. And and some of that's we just got to we got to continue. You've heard me say this, um, but we've got to continue to work on our zone drops. We got to be better in that. Uh, offensively, really controlled the game. I thought uh, really good on third and fourth down. Rushed for over three hundred yards. Um, we got to improve our pass game execution. We lost, we left a lot of yards out there in the pass game, and then uh, disappointing. We had the penalty, you know, which was a good call that took the touchdown off the board late there. Uh, players of the week uh, in the win. Um, our lineman of the week was Wyatt Milam. Uh, he's played really well. I think he he should be a first team All Conference player. Special teams player of the week, Michael Hayes. Told you, um, kickoffs were critical. Two big field goals. Defense player of the week uh, was Beanie Bishop. He had three tackles, two interceptions, a PBU. Uh, Garrett was our offensive player of the week. Uh, three touchdowns, uh, three for 156 and ran for 64. And then um, we give the Blue Collar Award. Jalen Thornton probably played his best game on defense. Uh, had the fumble recovery, but he played really well. Um, Eddie V played well, and I thought Preston Fox played a really good game. Special teams-wise, blocked really well on the perimeter. And so – our special, or our scout team players of the week were Tyler Evans, Donald Brandle, and Tyler Kane. Um, and so that's kind of the wrap up for that. Um, BYU kind of turned the page. Uh, glad to be back home. Uh, we need to redeem ourselves after the fourth quarter versus Oklahoma State. And uh, looking forward to getting in front of their home fans. It's a true blue game. It's military appreciation. Uh, military appreciation game's always one of my favorite games. Uh, my sister serves in the Air Force. Um, and uh, I know that – I think it's the uh, uh, group out of Charleston, you know, the 130th Aviation Wing. You know, Dax is going to be a big excited because they're doing a flyover and, and a lot of things within the game to, to honor our military personnel, which is, which is well earned by them. Uh, it's also Chuck Halley's. Uh, we're retiring number 66, uh, one of the greatest players ever played here. Um, and I think there was a – you know, when he was getting inducted last summer into the Hall of Fame – I was just reading about him, trying to learn about him. And I saw a Tom Landry quote, talked about he may have been the best football player he ever coached. And I think that pretty much says that. Uh, everything needs to be said about that. And uh, looking forward to meeting his family on, on Friday when they get into town. Um, but uh, BYU, very proud program. You know, our fans really need to show up and, and be loud. We need their support here. Uh, BYU is a national brand. They travel well wherever they go. I think this is their only uh, real East Coast game of the year. So, sure, there will be a lot of their fans here. Um, but very disciplined group, physical, special teams. Their specialists are, are, are extremely talented. Offensively, uh, they've got a first-round pick in their left tackle. They've got two wideouts that I see repeatedly on the top ten plays on Sports Center. So they're doing something right there. Uh, but they're really good players, and, and they're an issue for us. They're going to be an issue for us. Uh, defensively, very good front. They're long. Uh, that's the thing that sticks out to you is they're really, really long. Uh, they've got a couple good cover guys. Um, and, and they're one of the best teams in the country in takeaways. And so uh, really a formidable opponent, uh, somebody I've, I've enjoyed getting to know, Coach uh, Sataki, uh, good guy, does a great, 
good, great job there. You know, you know what you're going to get, and we're going to have to play our best because they're not going to be a group that beats beats themselves. So with that, I'll uh, take questions. So Neil, start with uh, defense. I mean, you guys are obviously beat up, injured there. Not going to get some of them back. So do you just have to be opportunistic with the turnovers and realize you're going to give up yards? How, how do you approach your no, defense we, now? We got to be better in our run fits. You know, the edge of our defense has got to be better. We've got to, we've got to get more production out of our out of our spur. And when I say production, like just doing your job. You know, like the way our defense is built, <clears throat> the edges of our defense are the edge of our defense. We got to maintain that edge, and it's got to be a hard edge. We got to set that edge, and and we're not doing a good enough job, which which teams are picking on us, kind of in the boundary B gap. Um, so we've got to shore that up, and then we're missing too many tackles, and some of those missed tackles are due because we're not fitting it right up front, which you leave a big a bigger gap than needs to be. You know, we talk about we want to be able to tackle in phone booths. Right. So, you know, it's a pretty reasonable expectation to be able to tackle on a phone booth. All of a sudden, you know, that that thing gets to be six, eight feet wide. You know, that's that's hard to tackle, you know, and we need to make our we need to meet. We need to make more of those than we are. Um, but we've got to do a better job of fitting the run game. And I think that's a reasonable expectation. Um, and then we've got to be better in our zone drops because we're given easy completions. And it, and it what it comes down to is we're, we're sinking further than we need to or we're not on our landmark. You know, all of, all of our zone drops and our zone coverage are based on landmarks, depth, and a location on the field. And we may be off by a yard or two, but that yard or two is giving up completions. You can go look at the first third down completion they had. There's no way that ball should be completed in that defense, but we're not on the right landmark. And so even with injuries, even with some guys having to play more snaps, the reasonable expectation is we should be able to fit the run better and we should be able to be – more more efficient in our in our zone drops. Fair to say that three of the four turnovers you guys created. Yeah, I, I do. It's uh, so obviously the sack fumble was big. Lee Lee's got a real knack for for rushing the passer, and we'll continue to use him in that. Uh, we got Eddie V got pressure in the face on one of them. Uh, we had pressure on the other one too. Um, and, and really, I could make a strong argument that we that we really forced because. Um, on the second one that Beanie has, he did a really good job in coverage versus they were trying to run a post and an over. And uh, Plumley actually threw it to the over, but the post never got off. And so Beanie was kind of right there. So I could make an argument that we, that we really forced kind of all of them. Injuries? I mean, you yeah, so, Hershey, anything? So, Doug? Yeah, so Doug, Doug, I would say, would be doubtful. Hudson and, and Traylon Ray will both play. Um, Hershey will know more tomorrow, but, I, but I'm hopeful there. Uh, Lamp will return. Grayson missed the game. He's going to miss, an, and it's uh, um, kind of a freak deal that he just had a routine. Um, nothing. It's nothing real serious, but it's a issue that's going to keep him out at least one more week, and so hopefully we'll get him back after that. Uh, anybody else? Brandon Yates. He played. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he went back in the game. He, he did – he missed like one play, but he played the rest of the game, yeah. Obviously – it's been banged up throughout the season with Burks and things like that. But how would you evaluate the secondary in particular throughout the whole season and then even the UCF game? Yeah, you know, I thought at corner, um, that was one of our – really one of our better games. Beanie played well in coverage. He played really well in man coverage. Um, I thought both Malachi and Jacoby, that's probably the best Jacoby's covered. I um, thought he – that was that was very positive. Malachi um, played um, – he, he's solid. You know, he played really solid at corner. We played him um, six or eight snaps at safety, and I thought he was pretty consistent there too. Um, you know, we can play better at safety. You know, we're missing too many tackles. Um, we played better uh, in the second half, considerably better in the second half. Um, but I think we're leaving some plays out there. You gave up, I think it was 162 yards rushing at halftime. I think after that it was 27 yards. Was that a function of the turnover that Koba forced, that forced them to chase you when you got the two-possession lead and made it a one-dimensional game, would you say? Well, I think two things. We did a much better job on early downs in the second half. And so they were in uh, some second and longs rather than some second and short, second and mediums where you kind of dictate. Um, so we did a better job there. And then, yes, once, we, once it was a two-score game, then they had to throw the ball probably more than they're comfortable with. 
Jalen, your, your special teams look like just naturally some new people in there too. Just how much change are you doing there because of that and preserving your defense? Then I don't know. It just seems like not putting the ball in play, like you know, touchbacks. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it, it was much. huge. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's why I, I you know I talked about Michael so much because you know you cover eight kickoffs. That's a lot, and in, it was windy. You know, that's the thing that you, I don't know if you can tell on TV or not, but it was really windy in that stadium. And for him to, you know, kick six touchbacks and one fair catch was a huge because we are. We're, we've taken some of our defensive starters, some of those guys that are playing, you know, almost every snap on defense. We try to reduce their role on special teams, really hold them to one. And so we do have some different guys back there. We're really going bigger on kickoff, um, which I think, which I think fits what – how teams in our league are, are returning the ball against us. So we've gone bigger. Um, but it is. It's big. And it's it's huge when Ali gets the ball up in the air, too. You know, when he's at his best, you know, we're, we're a fair catch operation because he turns the ball over, he hangs it up. He, it, his ball, it's kind of a knuckleball. And it's hard to catch. Um, and so, so both of those guys are critical, especially now that we've, we're a little bit thinner than we were early. I'm kind of amused over this. Uh, mm -hmm. Mean, it seems like he's trying to pick on, uh, you know, target, target mm -hmm. now. Yeah, he all year, you know, virtually has done a pretty good job over there. I mean, he's, you know, knocking passes down and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think, I mean. Well, he plays into the boundary. He on the other side. No, nah, well, he plays, he plays in, <laughs> nah, yeah. Um, he plays, uh, he plays into the boundary. So, um, most teams, because it's easier, it's it's a closer throw. You get more throws into the boundary just naturally. Uh, so I don't know if teams are picking on him as much, but um, a lot of times your your lead target is into the boundary, and so that's usually where bigger people are. And and he is smaller. He's not small, but he's smaller than some of the big guys in our league. You know that are six two, two hundred plus pounds. Um, he's he's really. Um, his best football is when he's in man coverage. He does a good job using his hands. Um, he does a good job of using his hands to be able to see and, and get his eyes back. Um, he's had several interceptions. He's dropped a few. You know, I, I said this after the game. Like, if you lead it in PBUs, that's great. That means they're not catching them, but it also means you're dropping some. So, uh, but no, he's been a really good influence. Not just uh, his performance on the field, but he's been he's been really good as a veteran guy in that secondary room and corner and safety because he goes to work, he's consistent, uh, he does all the little things as far as taking care of his body. So that's been a good uh, – he's been a good kind of leader in that group. That, that stat that um, came out this morning from Fox Sports, I think, about the streak of 140 yards over 11 games, you proud of that considering the number of guys you've had on the offensive line that were involved in that, different runners that have been involved in that? Yeah, I think that uh, – yeah, I think proud is the right word. Now we got to kind of keep it up. That's something we've been kind of – I don't know if we've been tracking 140, but we've known we've ran, ran the ball. It, we've been one of the better rushing teams since we made a calculated decision with about three games ago last year that for us to be successful, we needed to kind of steer in that direction. Um, but, yeah, there's there's been a – you know, we've had some injuries up front, so there's been a kind of a moving – bunch up there uh, we've had several different tight ends play over those 11 games um, you know we had a number a number of running backs have been the leading rusher over that time and so um, and we played multiple quarterbacks yeah so I think that is it is a a, a stat that you know that sticks out yeah that we're proud of but we got to we got to continue we got to keep it up now John people it's out there just on um, the beanie note obviously you watch film and what players did elsewhere when especially when they were transferred mm -hmm. Would you say he's met or even exceeded expectations? Because he's talked about, feels like, from what he's saying, he feels almost like he wasn't put in as much of a position to succeed to this level, maybe at Minnesota last year. Mm -hmm. And, and th these numbers weren't happening last well, year. So, yeah, so when we made our decision, like we really tried to get him coming out of Western Kentucky. Uh, when he went into the portal the first time, we, we really tried to get him. We thought he'd be a – a plus player for us. And I liked him. Well, first of all, I knew a lot. So I knew what kind of person we were getting because he's from Louisville. I knew the people that trained him. I knew the people coached him in high school. Um, and I trust those individuals. So, um, and he made a ton of plays on the ball. You know, at Western, he was a really good kickoff returner there. He made a bunch of plays on the ball. When he went to Minnesota, 
I didn't watch a ton of the tape. Honestly, I watched a little bit. They played him more inside, and I knew we weren't we weren't taking him to play nickel. That he was their third corner, played little corner, played more nickel, and uh, you know he played. It wasn't like he didn't play, but I, he didn't play to the extent that he wanted to, and I think that's why he left again. And this has been a good. We had a need. It's kind of one of the positive stories out of the portal is we had a distinct need. We wanted somebody that was a veteran, had leadership, and can and could cover. And so far. All three of those areas have been a check for him. Third, new, I mean, another newcomer you're playing in the league and you're going to play all four. Problems with facing them or at this point in the season you, you've got so much tape that you know the scout even though you haven't played them in years past? Yeah, I think that – so it's always more challenging uh, when you play somebody that you haven't played. You know, and I think I spoke of this maybe when we were playing uh, – it may have been even last week – is when you – we were in a league where you were playing the same teams every year. And there wasn't just a ton of coaching turnover within the league. So you could go back and um, and look at, you know, how they defend you, how did you defend them. You go back and look at your notes. Well, that's not the case um, for playing BYU. And so it's different. It's uh, – honestly, when I turned on the film yesterday, they were kind of what I expected them to be, you know, from watching them on TV. Um, they've been – I've watched a lot of their offense over the last couple of years because I think they've been creative. They've – They've had some really good quarterbacks there, and they've been creative, and they've kind of been different um, as far as sometimes they, you know, with Slovis, they're they're doing more drop back. You know, when Zach Wilson was there, you know, they were doing a lot of motions and a lot of quarterback run stuff. The kid last year who was really good as well, um, they kind of continued what they were doing with Wilson. Um, and so I've, I've watched them from afar offensively. But first time that I've really just sit down yesterday and, and watched them as somebody we're going to play, and, and they were who I thought they were. They're a group that's really physical on both sides of the ball. Um, they they get lined up. They don't get silly penalties. They play really smart football. Um, and um, it, it's going to be a challenge. You know, I, I told our team today when we, when we kind of turned the page to BYU, I said, you know, everything that we – that we preach about wanting to be, you know, they prove that they are. And so it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a really, um, really intriguing game for me to see kind of where we're at. How valuable is it to have the variety you have in running backs and the way you can attack uh, both with, uh, you know, inside power with Downs and the, the White and two other guys with slashes and, and plus have a running quarterback that can – you know, do it. I mean, it, 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 you, you probably have a tough time defending yourself. So they, so I think that, you know, I said this after the game too. I think Garrett gives us a chance because, um, you know, he he is doing a really good job in decision making. We're putting we put a lot on him last week. That was the most we put on him, um, and we probably ran him a little bit more than I really wanted to. But that's just kind of how the game went. Um, but his decision making on when to hand it off, when to keep it, those were really good. Um, and that was CJ. That's the best he's played since Pittsburgh. Um, Jaheim, you know, that's, you know, we, we saw that. That's who he was all week. And I think he can do that. You know, his best run was probably, you know, he's got good speed, but his best run was probably an inside zone, you know, an inside run that he hit right up the middle and then got to the sideline on. Um, and then Justin, Justin didn't play as well this week, but um, a week ago against Oklahoma State, he was really – his reads were, were really consistent, and I thought he got downhill. Um, and so, between those three guys, I think they give us an opportunity, and we'll continue to get touches. And we'll use Rodney in the run game too. You know, he, he gave us some, some positive runs uh, last week. We'll continue to use him in the run game. Um, I think the challenge for us is to, be, is to be different, you know, not put the same stuff on film all the time. I think uh, – talking to Rodney, I, I think he had more touches Saturday than the whole rest of the year. What – What's he kind of showing in practice? Yeah, he's coming along, and I think some of it is just <clears> – <throat> so really in the last two weeks, you got to remember too, Garrett just healthy enough to kind of be who we thought we want – you know, who we've been kind of the last um, couple weeks is who we thought we were going to be on offense. And so um, now that he can, can run and you can actually call some run plays for him, you can get more people involved in the run game. And so Rodney's getting better, you know, on, as a route runner. Um, but he's really good with the ball in his hands. And so, you know, it's hard sometimes to dictate receivers throwing him the ball because there's a lot of variables there, but you can handle him the ball and it's a little bit easier. And so, and he's been practicing better too. You mentioned uh, portal hits, and I know everybody looks at recruiting and says, well, a kicker, but 
Hayes has been a big hit for you. Yeah, he has. Yeah, there's no question. You know, he's been a factor for us on kickoffs. Um, he's kind of picked off, picked up where we let, where where Casey left off in the field goal game too, which has been a real weapon for us. Were you comfortable with him? Fifty yards is a comfortable. Yeah, just- yeah, he can go probably to fifty-five. You know, he probably could have kicked a little bit longer than that with the wind on Saturday. So BYU is a new opponent, obviously, but Keaton Slovis is, is not mm-hmm. a new opponent himself. Any difference of being able to at least have film or the fact that you did play this quarterback last year and. Have you looked and seen any differences in him? This yeah, year? we'll yeah we'll go back and watch some of his stuff when we played against him last year. We're different defensively too. You know how we're structured is different than how we played last year at the first game. Um, but yeah, there is some familiarity there. But it works both ways. He's got some familiarness familiarity with us too. Is there any any reason you think BYU's had more success than the other newcomers? Well, I think it's early. You know, I think um, the one thing is is they were playing a really challenging schedule over the last couple of years. When they when they went independent, you know, they were playing a ton of Power Five schools. Um, so I think that's helped in their transition. It's probably better for Kalani. You know, that's probably a better question for him. But I think it's hard to judge any of them to the end of the year. What do you think? This is the first time you'll get a newcomer here. What, what do you think? You know their experience coming to Morgantown is going to be. Yeah, I don't. You know that, that again. That's probably a better question for them. You know, they're it's a it's a it's a long trip, but it's also um, again just watching this brand from afar. BYU. It's a national brand. It's you know they their group always travels well. They they always travel well. So um, I could be wrong. I think this is the only time they're playing on the East Coast. If I if I'm am I, I think I'm right there. And so I think there's probably. Um, some juice there for them because um, there there's uh, a ton of the members of the church that are on the East Coast, and I think they'll be well represented here. Did you suggest to play at noon for them? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think the I think the think the league took care of them, which I understand. Yeah, that's one thing is uh, being the easternmost team. I definitely understand some of the travel. So hey, we're, we'll play the night game. Our fans will be excited. You know, your opinion on helmet communication? Now I've been I've been a proponent for it, Greg. It makes no sense that we don't have helmet communication. All right, if all the money we have in college football, it is one of the more asinine things that we don't have helmet communication. Like, and I've been an advocate for it. Um, I'm the Big 12 representative for the AFCA um, on a rules deal. Like, I've been an advocate for it. It makes no sense. Like, it's easy. The technology's there. Uh, we've used it the last two springs, and so. 100% we should use it. I think that uh, the bowl games, you know, I think you'll see it being used in some bowl games hopefully. And then this time next year, some of this nonsense, we don't have to worry about it. All right, I go to this meeting. Thank you all.